Um, I search a little to find the promising ones. They are, right. uh, yeah, like uh, you know. Algolia? Yeah, Algolia is the most uh, famous one. No, it's okay. It's a service, you know, it's a cloud service and uh, it indexes your data. And uh, whenever you search, the request is sent to Algolia servers and they respond to you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it has good, it has a uh, guest plugin, good community, you know, uh, uh, well known, uh, and uh, good, it has good documentation. And uh, it's one of uh, the good point is that they have some, uh, they have noted uh, in their website that they uh, offer some discount or free services to. Nonprofit organization, NGOs, and uh, yeah. open source ones. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, one of them immediately after I just created uh, an account to see what's there to play with it. Uh, they rush to me uh, uh, to help me. Uh, maybe they will do that for free. Or, uh, yeah. And that's the most promising one, I guess. Uh, the other ones is some mail search that Kai uh, mentioned that time. It's it's a very good project, uh, uh, but you know we should set up our server, uh, and it's not scalable. In in our case, it's not necessary, but uh, you know we should set up server, handle the request, do something like that, uh, and. Yeah, uh, need some resources to just pay uh, in, in case of time and a server. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a complete.js. It's uh, run on the client. You know, the browser should fetch all the data that should be searchable. Uh, and uh, the user's search and uh, the, all the search process is done on the user, on the browser, you know, maybe uh, I know it's a decision that can take if can if we know that our data is not much, you can say that okay, it should be our uh, solution. And the last one is Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is uh, I have some experience with, not much, but uh, it's complex. It's uh, something that uh, should have good knowledge to use it. Uh, yeah, it's complicated, it's scalable, it's I think, uh, it's a well for uh, searching, indexing, uh, synonym detection, I guess. And, but uh, setup in that is more complex than mail search and takes like more time to keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are the promising ones that I found. Okay. Um, cool. So, but uh, so this one is called uh, Algolia. So, which is your favorite? Because I think um, Algolia sounds perfect, but it's not open source, and uh, you know, I doubt they're going to have like a nonprofit thing. Um, but uh, it might not hurt to find out. So, which do you recommend? Personally, I prefer Algolia. It's not open source, but you know, uh, it reduces our, our time consumption. Uh, how, how much is it? How much is what time? Uh, Algolia. Do we have we have to pay for it? Yeah, here's uh, pricing. It. Yeah, uh, but okay. yeah. Unless uh, my, uh, I asked, I uh, re I replied their emails. I asked them to introduce me about the prices for the research project, like us and yours, and, and they are a nonprofit research project. Uh, I asked them to tell me what's the pricing for us. Uh, we uh, maybe we can decide after they re uh, they answer us about the price. Uh, yeah, as the data grows, the price grows. Do, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, for the MVP, I guess we can count on the, it as a free service. Uh, go. 
devices. For 10,000 search per month, it's free. But I think the problem with that is scaling. Is it like what happens when we get past 10,000 searches a month and then we all of a sudden have to pay for it? I mean, that would be a good place to be, but like, um, would we have to, um, would we be like, would be, would we be forced to find another solution if we don't have the revenue to afford like more than 10,000 searches a month? You know, so for, we'd have to do the, we'd have to do the math behind like rev, expected revenue income, you know? Yeah, you're right. Uh, 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 Which might make sense. I mean, like, like that's a lot of like 11,000, 10,000 searches a request a month is a lot. Yeah. Like that's, that's pretty, uh, that's a lot of, um, that's a lot of searches. So maybe we can, I mean, maybe it's affordable. It might actually be affordable, but I, I just wouldn't want to like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to like do some back of the napkin math. Um, and like, that, that's like misdirected and, and say it's affordable. And like when it's actually, you know, we wouldn't be able to afford it. Cause, cause that would mean like we'd have to completely overhaul the search once we surpassed like 10,000 searches a month, which would, um, so I'm trying to yeah. find, yeah. But we should uh, have hope. Uh, we should have hope about the uh, free or discounting a service, you know. And after, you know, the price is one dollar uh, for every more than ten for every one after ten thousand for every thousand we should pay one dollar per month. Yeah, that's affordable. Yeah, and if you just rent a very cheap server, we should pay after five bucks per month. And other, and well, we we also don't know the use the primary use case like how people are going to discover these projects, like how they're going to, um, like arrive at the project that they're looking for. Is that going to be a discovery mechanism, or is that going to be something that, um, like is primarily search based, right? Like like. Because I, I can say I would say that it's going to be primarily search based. Like if I'm really looking for a specific project, now I might have a preference for browsing. I might want to like look through the project and say, um, oh, this one looks cool. You know, look through the website and say, hey, look, this looks cool. Maybe I'll try this one. Um, but you know, that's going to be a lot of user testing. I think. I think that's going to be up to like the design implementation. So I didn't get the point. You say that we have uh, we should have some global searching, something like that. I didn't get it. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we we have to understand how users are going to interact with the projects that are posted. I mean, am I am I understanding this correctly that it's going to be like like searching for projects? Like, what are we going to be searching? Uh, the title, description, everything. So project title, project description. Yeah. Yeah, so that might be like the primary. Um, that might be the primary mechanism for discovering the projects. It's entirely possible. Tags, tags and uh, and tags. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think search is a, is massively handy. Like, I think that's a really handy tool. I'm I'm a big fan of searching. So, maybe it's justified as far as I'm concerned. But um, we don't have to have these. I mean, I don't know. I I think it, if you said it's pretty good, like uh, it also does implement like instant search and A/B testing. Um, It's really powerful. Yeah, it does a lot of stuff, but maybe too much. Search as a service. I mean, it even does voice search and everything. That's um all right. Well, 
I think we can if you're saying if you're saying a dollar a month or a dollar um past ten thousand searches per month, uh that's that's reasonable. Yeah. I mean what so all that's the only non open source uh option that you found? Like like so Melee like Melee search and autocomplete JS, Elasticsearch, those are all um they're open source, they're, yeah. They're all open source, yeah. Are those all, the only ones? Okay. Hmm. The autocomplete, maybe um, uh, we can uh, use autocomplete JS and MVP because our data is not much. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, try it uh, out. Uh, not try it out, but uh, it has documentation. It's right. All right. Well, so what? What is a unit? Like, like, wow. how much is like? So a dollar a unit per month. A dollar unit per month. Do you know what a unit is? Uh, yeah, it's an algolia. Yeah. It's one thousand search request. One oh, okay. Request. One k. One k search per month. A dollar per thousand searches per month. Hmm. That's reasonable. Hmm. I, I I I'm in favor of it. And if there's a free trial, like there's even a free tier. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Cuz you're a f you were a fan of um uh, Ela uh Millie search, right? Kai? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Flex search. Hmm.
Plex search dot js. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is pure JavaScript. That's awesome. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you drop in code the template JS? Yes. Uh, because it's similar to uh, and and face the data and uh, search on the client. You know, Guy, I have a question about the page generation in Gatsby. Uh, the create pages, what's the main advantage? What's the, the, the main purpose of that? To make the, the site faster? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. Got it. Now I understand more because I had I, I didn't get it quite when when you mentioned it. So I was checking the code and now I understand. Uh, I, I believe that that's a great way to, to handle it if it's possible. Let's say if uh, the slug is not found, uh, go find it dynamically in the in the in the backend. And, Okay. Hello. Hmm. In that in that aspect, Next.js uh, goes beyond Gatsby so so much. Now I see a big difference. Mm -hmm. No, I'll, I'll I'll make that an issue and I'll try to to fix to, to make it work alongside what Camilo made uh, because I see the slugs are being handled by Gatsby uh, in the build, uh, so I think we could skip that part and use the slug name that is generated when the project is created, as I explained it to you in the beginning. After that. Uh, we can check if that slug is not found in the generation of the Gatsby uh, node. Um, let's. I I think we can use this what you're showing the router and and make a dynamic fetch in there. I would. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Right, All right, do you guys want to um, uh, tackle some of these other issues? Like it's already past 11, so we might as well just keep chugging, chugging along. Um, uh, we talked, Kai, before you arrived, we were talking about some of the epics. Um, regarding the project updates and donations. Um, context in the app. Mateo, did you get what you needed about uh, the global context in the app? Uh, no, I, that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, what I meant okay. is that uh, just as there is a Torus provider in the, in the uh, app structure, I added a global provider which will help a lot on uh, managing information between components uh, because um, yeah making uh, passing information through props etc is really not ideal uh, what i did is let me see if i can share the screen is more obvious because i want opinion from from a meaning guy. Uh, okay. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So so far is the tourist provider that is how it works. I added a global provider that will use as much providers as we need. I so far we are only using or I only made a project provider part which is this a, a hook a regular hook that um, 
will be attached as a higher order component on the index. Let's see, what is it? Uh, okay, I get lost. <laughs> uh, second. Totally missed it. What is it? Anyway, uh, what I wanted to say is it is a regular hook that you handle all the information that you want to keep in the in the store, etc. But I also implemented a way to keep it in the local storage if you desire it. Because sometimes as this application is not server rendered. As soon as you press refresh, all that information will go missing. So this hook that is right outside of that uh, uh, document, we have the use local storage that is a code that I found that uh, in the Stack Overflow that is really cool. That what it does is takes the store value in the context that you assign and makes a copy of it in the local storage and it rehydrates it or refresh or no it's rehydration i think is the word all the store as soon as uh, you try to uh, define it it's tough for me to explain it in english sorry <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, I wanted to get feedback on that implementation uh, because I don't know what's your opinion on cookies on, on and all of that to keep the information available even when the application is is reloaded. Do you think local storage is a good option or should we handle cookies better or I don't know what kind of experience do you have? Guy or I mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, is it, uh, I guess uh, it's local story is simpler and I don't know it's based on the requirement you know uh, it's a high, it's a high uh, it's a high level of service to say okay if you change your browser yeah if it's stored in a cookie we will have it if we change the browser is it I'm not sure oh uh, so what's the advantage of keeping that in the cookie i think uh, the cookies can expire at some point that's the difference with local storage local storage if you, if you don't delete them it remains there forever oh yeah Local, uh, uh, I prove you know, I guess local is enough for this case. I don't know, Kai, what do you think? Bless you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and the question, if we have, I have two tab open, opens, and uh, mm -hmm. for any reason those tabs are closed, just one of them is uh, saved as a in the storage. Is it true, Matthew? And no, the the storage would be, would remain in both or the three tabs because it's the same browser. If you open it in another browser, that's uh, that's when it changed. So each, each tab has its own storage, right? Sorry, what? 
each storage has each tab has its own storage because we had such problem in the US run until we changed the MetaMask API. You know, every time the user changed the uh, uh, the network, all the page was reloading and uh -huh. and all the data was lost. You know, that time until we changed the API and now we don't need to reload the page. So it's in my mind, I didn't know I, uh, that every tab has its own storage. Is it true? I haven't make a real test to be sure, but I believe that it's the storage of the browser is general. If you open it in another tab, it should be the same, but I cannot make that for sure. So I will, I will test that and, and see. But that, that's a good point, actually. But yeah, uh, what I try to do is that in the state management that is uh, handled by the context provider to react, uh, it actually uh, be in synchronization with the local storage and it, it will solve the issue that when refreshed the page, it won't get lost. But for multiple tabs, I haven't tested yet. So I will, I will have that in mind and maybe consider the cookies or I don't know, another kind of solution to that. But yeah, that's excellent. That's what I tried to. Thank you. Uh, Esther, cookie should be, uh, should be global for the browser, I guess. Cookie, if you have several tabs, all of a sudden the cookie would be the same. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know, I'm not sure. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, all right. How about um, you want to implement us, uh, update us on the Stripe donation flow and the slug implementation, Mateo? Yeah, I was hoping that Camilo would jump in to the call, yeah. uh, but he didn't. So I will be implementing uh, the webhook that he developed on the impact graph. Uh, so yeah, that I don't have much updates on that because I haven't integrated yet, but that's okay. the last point on the donation through fiat because the PDF is already set. Uh, we still need to make some fixes that, well, the feedback from, from Willie and, yeah. and Marco earlier this week, and that would be it. Well, and also now, besides that, for the whole donation flow, it's only missing the public address for the project that may be uh, a little bit different now that the Torres provider is um, more complete now with the implementation that, that I mean made. So, for that part, it's it's also needed a, a little tweak. I think the issue is also there regarding the, the, the public address. Hmm, okay. All right. Yeah, the number 100. Nice. Display for its, its address in the net with crypto flow. That's, that's also missing. And I misspelled. I, I I wanted to say Topia, no Taurus. I I mix the terms. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll just. Do you want to just keep the one hundred in? Um. Where it is, for now. Yeah. Yeah. To do. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's keep moving. I guess uh, Kai, you had you wanted to figure out how to solve routes for projects, right? Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. For what? Um, 
Yeah, uh, we, I, there, there is a break in your voice. Sorry, uh, we get rid of what? OMB file, right? Which file is that? MV file. Oh, ENV. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, which of them is in the oh ENV example in GitHub? Yeah. The Ethereum node is not. Usable, I guess. One of them is yeah. A login resolver. What's this? No, it's a I'm a both. So uh, uh, yeah, current I yeah. It's got yeah, current ID is not in Let's update, you know, maybe my my mind is a bit uh at the end is an example. No, because uh, I fetched the uh, I I updated and I had don't have a, all the keys. Uh yeah. Yeah. I just uh Figuring out uh, what's the purpose of a lag lagging resolver. What's the lagging result? Where is it used? Yes, you were. Yeah, I, I I guess yeah we don't need uh, infra infra uh, ex, uh, because we are using Taurus provider and there is also we don't have we don't need client ID as you said yeah these two are the ones that are the ones that should be created should be deleted can be deleted but I should figure out what's the purpose of login resolver I don't use that. Uh, Yeah, there's component login resolver. What's that? Oh, uh, it's in the oh, it's in the user impact. Sorry, sorry, I I have user impact in front of me. He did not give us to. I'm so sorry, so sorry. Yeah, let's see this. Uh, let's see this. Oh, uh, yeah, client ID, a proxy contract address. What's this? Uh, we don't need proxy uh, contract address anymore, as far as I know. And the network should be there. Uh, Ethereum node should, a uh, gas Ethereum node should be removed. Yeah, and the verifier name. What's the verifier name? Oh, and the verifier name, I guess, should be removed too. All right, let's, uh, you know, we should uh, wait for the merge before. Uh, the merge of my change to that. Uh, oh, it's merge. Okay. So we can remove them. But if you are, um, it wasn't. Let's check out the staging. I should staging. Uh, it was used in the uh, direct WebSK. Uh, 
uh, currently we are not using it. Uh, Google Calendar, we are not using, okay. Verifier name is not used. Verifier name should be removed, can be removed. And yes, we are there. Yeah, the same can be removed. Hopefully, these are fields that yeah, is not useful anymore. Are not useful anymore. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay. Um, well, that's all the uh, that's all the developer. That's all the topics that I had for this week. Um, those are the only topics that I had. Did you guys want to keep going through some uh, issues and clear them out? Yeah, search functionality. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, do we do you think that we need synonym search? You know, when a user search for something that uh, it matches the synonym of the that word in the search capability. Do you think that it's uh, yeah has um. I mean, you didn't contact them to find out if it was free for nonprofits, right? I contacted them, but uh, it's the weekend, I guess. Uh, oh, okay. We should wait for the answer. Uh, but you contacted them for that specific purpose? Yeah, for our project. Uh, yeah. That we are NGO and, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. NGO. Maybe uh, we should redirect them to someone else to discuss. Uh, I don't know, because I'm not managing those. <clears throat> legal right. stuff yeah i hear you thanks no thanks for reaching out that's that's good maybe can we can, can i redirect them to you in case yeah yeah thing? yeah toss them over to me and i'll uh, i'll handle it i'm sure i'm probably the right one to be talking to them about that okay do you have any us email i don't ben? no i don't oh, okay. i haven't i haven't gotten that yet um uh, probably should right I guess uh, Kai, is a god. <laughs> Kai is a god. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, welcome, Willie. Uh, we are just going through the uh, agenda. Um, we are just talking about um, this really awesome search feature that we um, found that uh, may or may not be free. We're not really sure. Uh, if it's for, you know, if you're an NGO or a nonprofit. Um, so we're going to find out, but we stumbled upon like the fact that I don't have an email address yet for Giveth. So um, we wanted to kind of get one of those. Are you, are you in charge of that? Like, you know, I, Kai was telling me that, uh, I think you're muted. Um, Kai was telling me that, oh, okay was yeah we're migrating all the email addresses and we want like unlimited addresses for like something per month but um i don't know is there a solution until then yes asking me so i, do, I have never had a giveth.io email i think kai, kai probably uh -oh. has better um uh, okay info about how we've done that in the past you have all of the <laughs> okay. Huh. huh. Okay.
Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have a link? Can you send me the link about that? I mean, I, I'd like to just review it. I'm probably not the one to make the decision about that, but I, I just want to learn about it a little bit. Migadu.com. Okay. You think the $19 per year would cover us for a bit, Kai? Cool. I think is it is it hard to set up an, an email server, you know, for also in a squirrel or something like that? What about um, just Google Premium? Like, uh, have it basically, it's basically Gmail, but it routes to our address, like our a giveth address, and it enables like. Uh, yeah. Wait, is there a nonprofit discount? But wait a second. Hold up. I think there is, actually. I know because I because I have a nonprofit myself and I use it. I got free. I think I did. Let me verify that. Um, you keep keep going, keep going. I'm just going to Google independently. Yeah, yeah, we got to Yeah, remember we're a nonprofit, so premium Google for nonprofits. Yeah, no, it 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 definitely is like it it. Google for nonprofits. I'll, I even have the link. G Suite Nonprofit Resource Center. Yeah, it's free. G nice. Suite for nonprofits. Yeah. Cool. So we'll try. We'll try and get the free G Suite. If not, uh, Sogu and Migag Migaru. Here it is. Solution. Sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I just feel like we're using, we're depending on Google so much already that it makes sense to just keep going with that because these these look cool. Like, um, 
I don't know how would they like work for Linux? That's always my question. <laughs> I always have to ask like, does it run on Linux? Uh, I can tell. I'm I'm looking at your your taskbar and it looks like wax. So you must be running something. It looks like wait, you like probably run an Arc, I think. Oh, it's Ubuntu. Okay, heavily modified. See, yeah, I'm running the mint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm I'm on mint. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Google for nonprofits is like, there is like, it's the same, same process. Um, like there's an approval process. It's the same as, um, I guess, Notion, but you set up somebody uh, sets up like a Gmail account and then applies um, for a, uh, like nonprofit account and they, that you know, you got to submit your documentation. There's like a review and then approval process. But, um, like I said, in the link, it's, it's, uh, Gmail, it's calendar free premium video up to like a hundred users. So, um, and there's actually three, I didn't realize there were three tiers with it. Um, so there's like nonprofit like business, and then there's like nonprofit enterprise, which so different like scales, uh, like have a usage. But we should be okay. I feel like we could get away with just like the regular free tier, like the regular free version, because um, I don't think there's a limit on email addresses. So. Need to copy for, for FAQs. Oh, cool. Oh, this is super cool. So we, we got this is like a CMS, a custom CMS. Super cool. So this is controlling the content in the FAQ on the homepage. Is there any, any anywhere else where we're using that content full? So you just pulled up content full and that controls that we can use that to edit the copy in the FAQ. Is there any? Was it? Was it Wednesday? No, I was. I have work during at the same time as the that meeting, so I can't make, can't make it. That's super cool. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome.
cool. Yeah, can you invite me to Contentful? And I guess in, invite uh, Benjamin to Contentful. This looks awesome. Great. It's cool. Should be. Yeah. <laughs> Super hard to spell here. Uh, W-I-L-L-Y at Ogrizali, O-G-O-R-Z-A-L-Y dot com. I just typed it. Yeah, it's in the chat. It's super hard. It's O-G-O-R. Yeah, Poland. That's where my name's from. O-G-O-R-Z-A-L-Y. Yep. Dot com. Yeah. If anyone wants an at ogrizali dot com email, I got I got you. <laughs> probably nobody ever does. Yeah. A wife probably would. There we go. <laughs> cool. That looks awesome. Um, thanks for the quick demo. After you are done, Kai, I can show you also the stuff that I made this week. Know that when you're done, I'll next. I'll be next to show the progress. The progress. The the progress yeah, that yeah. I made this this week. Sweet, great work, guy. Okay. Yeah, Mateo, I'd love to see the progress. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Uh, I'm just waiting for Camilo to be done with the webhook so it's a complete and we don't have to make uh, too many pull requests. So yeah, it's preferable that it only happens with one. Yeah, can you see my screen then? Mm -hmm. Can you? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So while well, the project cards are already with the new design that when you pass the mouse over them, you have the givers and donations, the buttons. And when you go to donate, you go to the to that screen. Uh, I set up the information that I showed you, Willie, regarding the, the fees. So as soon as you click on the amounts, you can uh, already see the summary with the processing fee and such. Or you can say exactly how much money do you want to, to give out. Nice. Uh, the donate anonymously so far is working as a Boolean that says that you were anonymous mm -hmm. or not. I believe that Camilo will also make another decision on that aspect in the backend. And the $5 that is given to, to to give it uh, on a stripe is seen as a, a rate fee that goes directly to the to the marketplace so we don't have to handle so much logic on that when you go to the donate uh, oh, what happened there it's... well i found a book <laughs> but let's say you we only want to donate 505 you go to that and use uh, whatever card or they two, use. Two. Yeah. And you pay that money. Whatever. And it goes back to the checkout and says successful. Boom, that was easy. 
well, I we need a loading, a better looking loading site. Cool. Uh, <laughs> when you download the receipt, it shows the PDF that that everybody saw, and it failed for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what the reason is because the naming uh, it didn't download properly. But well, you you guys saw the the PDF how it works, so that's it. Uh, that PDF uh, is still needed the webhook so we can fetch the the real information and the PDF comes with the real information that that, that the stripe provides. Uh, well, that's about the donation to the fiat to the fiat flow, and the other part that I worked this week was in the project uh, details here in the learn more. This information is real, by the way. For this project, uh, there are actually two, two do donators and has already been done 17 donations. Uh, and this, Very cool. this, did you just say this data was real? Yeah, real in my in my database. <laughs> oh, cool. Real, real fake data. Yeah. Real Very fake cool. data, yeah. It's, it's not a hard, hard code is what I meant. Totally, cool. Um, the filters is working locally as well. The crypto, if you try to filter through crypto, there is no crypto. The donations show both. And if you search the donations, I only set up a, a search option as a donor. So, but yeah, that's as, as true as fake it is. <laughs> nice. The pagination is also working and I try to make us a as uh, as responsible as responsive as possible so it goes like this as a mobile Thanks. i need to fix the title but i need to also fix this so it goes a little separate the mm -hmm. table becomes little cards i will have to ask marco what's his input on this and the donate uh, little thing goes down below, like and that. it's always seen. So sticky. yeah, a sticky donation part. Very cool. This looks fantastic, Mateo. Great progress. Yeah. Looks super uh, slick. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing on that is in the staging because it's near to the backend because otherwise it will only be fake data, so it's not cool. Uh, so yeah, that, that's all from, from my side in this week. It's looking awesome. good, man. Yeah. So on the topic of uh, big PRs versus like small PRs, uh, especially because we're we haven't launched yet, do you guys should we wait until this until basically that whole feature is done for Mateo and Camille to put submit like one big PR, or is there any preference for submitting PRs along the way? Even if it's, even if the feature isn't fully complete. When I said that, I meant in particular to the impact graph because as we are migrating to our own repository, uh, I didn't believe that make as many as as pull requests were the best way. So uh, I'm not okay. sure in in our progress. Maybe regular PR for the staging makes it more readable because uh, as we should consider to review them not only accept them, so the code remains clean. And that goes really hard when you make a, a long pull request that is too much code to to even try to understand. So I don't know what, what's Kai's opinion on that. Yeah, I'm sorry for the next one because this one is going to be big. <laughs> awesome. Oh, cool. Cool. All right. Um, 
Well, uh, I mean, did you want to show uh, Willie anything or? Um, no. All right. Not, yeah, this week I just uh, I didn't do any update after uh, our Wednesday. No, just uh, yeah, I did just uh, research about the search functional fees available solutions, and okay. uh, I just was to discuss whether uh, synonym is important and matching uh, and search. Yeah, uh, because. Uh, uh, the services, uh, some, uh, backend services support, uh, support those, uh, you know, uh, because we have two type of solutions. One of them is the search is happening uh, at the backend. One of them is that uh, browser, some library in the browser face all the data and the search, uh, like uh, uh, maybe flex search and uh, autocomplete. Yes, uh, these uh, types of search are happening in the browser. So this is the question that should be answered, should be decided on that. So basically, we have to decide between kind of two categories of search, like the a search where it happens in the front end versus search where it happens in the back end. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, this, uh, you know, uh, the searching on the, uh, on the browser has the advantage of white labeling, it makes the white labeling, labeling easy, you know. Uh, and we don't need to set up another server for every, uh, organization. Uh, of course, uh, at the back end, we can find a solution for that. But uh, if we want to find, uh, if you we want to use something that you should pay for it, uh, every organization should set up another server, another uh, service for that. But if we search on this front end, if the data is not much, we can do that on the front end. Uh, and, the, you know, the other point is that synonym searching is not available, I guess, in the front end. No. That's a back end only. I guess back end is that where you get like the elastic search type stuff? Elastic, yeah, search. yeah. Elastic search is available, but it's complete to set up. Uh, there are services we should pay for, uh, they are uh, free on, on some uh, amount of requests, but after that, we should pay for it. Uh, but they are uh, they may note that we have some discount of free plan for uh, NGO and open source. Uh, we are in contact with them, uh, uh uh, yeah, and uh, I mailed them, but it's uh, weekend, and we should wait for the answer. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It's my Algolia. Product. The name it was Algolia. Have you heard of Algolia? I'm a huge fan of Algolia. I really like Algolia. They're okay. they're super like we used it at my first startup uh, for our search to search for like lawyers, and you can search. You can type in anything. You can search for like uh, areas of expertise names like stuff in their description and it was yeah. super performant and it was a great ux and it was pretty easy it was relatively easy to integrate and set up basically um so i'm a big fan but i think it's a really good consideration that if we were to go with something like algolia that would make white labeling a little more complex like basically each project would have to go set up their own algolia account and swap out their the api keys basically which isn't doesn't seem like it would be too tough um so I'm a little torn there. I want to see, can you share the best example of like what one of these front end uh, search libraries would look like if you guys haven't already? I want to just check them out. And if it looks like a good user experience and like it's like it'd be comparable to something like Algolia, then I think. Uh, yeah, I find Algolia this. Uh, 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 it's this instant search. Flex search is uh, something that I has used sometimes. Uh, I uh, get experience in this. We can talk about that. Uh, yes, the demo. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it cut out a bit there. I mean, what were you saying? I'm, I, I'm in session. I closed the tab. I'm searching again. Sorry. Okay, we got a, a minute or two until community call. So um, it seems like that's that's one of the goals for this week, though, is to select a search solution. Um, sorry, what did you say? What? One of the goals this week is to kind of select a, a search service. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, oh, I, I paste the demo, link to demo. Uh, because 
And let's I see we're talking about it in give it to. So let's keep talking about that and, and give it to. Maybe we can aim to make a decision by the next dev call by Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Okay. Is it, uh, that's an example of Algolia? Cool. You're saying that that cool. used Algolia? Okay. Cool. Oh, really? Okay. Cool. Where did you post the link? That's to that. In the dev channel. Okay. Cool. And uh, Kai said that like Osiris, what what for for what purpose? All right, I'm going to head up to the dev call. I'll see you guys there. Yeah. Cheers. All right, guys. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's finish this up. It's time to go to the, uh, to the community meeting. So I'll see you guys there. See you. See you.